Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, uh. Oh man. Hey there, LS Kids. Mr. Mark here. Welcome back to another week of LS Kids on your couch. If you're not watching this on your couch, you're doing something wrong. So today we're going to learn about how Jesus is the only perfect king. But before we get started, let's look at some things you might need for today's lesson. If you have one at home, you might want a copy of The Biggest Story. If you don't have one, don't worry, we'll be reading the story for you right here today. Some things you'll also need are your eyes, your ears, some paper, something to write or draw with, something to color with, a chair, some hand sanitizer, a Lego X-Wing, a giant stuffed animal, an extra large football, a big soft cube, some bubbles, a balloon, and of course, you'll need to bring yourself. Now that we have the materials we need, let's get our bodies ready to learn about Jesus. As you all know, there's definitely one thing that we do not want to happen when we are learning about Jesus. If you said pull a muscle, go ahead and put one hand in the air and give yourself a high five. So if you don't want to pull a muscle, what's the one thing that we need to do? Stretch it out! All right, boys and girls, for our first stretch, we're gonna stand up. Everybody stand up. Actually, you know what? I just remembered. For this one, we gotta sit down. Everybody sit down. Ah. Oh, you know what? Now that I'm sitting down, I think we need to stand up. Everybody stand up. No, it's sit down. It's definitely sit down. Sit down, sit down. You know what? Maybe it is stand up. Up, 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 up. Okay, okay, okay. For our first stretch, we go down, touch your toes, and reach for the sky. Touch your toes, reach for the sky. Touch your toes, reach for the sky. Touch your toes, reach for the sky. Toes, sky, toes, sky, toes, sky. And everybody hands on your hips. Okay, good. And now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick lap. Everyone take a lap. Here we go. Wait a minute. Hang on. Sorry about that, boys and girls. For our next stretch, here, shake it up. <laughs> and then take this leg right here, shake it up. <laughs> Step. Okay, good. And now take this hand right here, and everyone say hello. And then we're going to go down, touch this toe, and back up. And then everyone take this hand right here and say hello. Touch this toe, and back up. And this toe, 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 and this toe. And this toe. Okay. And everybody hands on your head, and baby steps to the middle. And everyone spin around one time. And everyone take a seat. <sighs> okay, if your hands are still on your head, you can go ahead and put one hand in the air and give yourself a high five. All right, now that we have everything we need, we only have one thing left to do. What's that? That's right, we need to pray. Will you all fold your hands and lock them together? And let's close our eyes and bow our heads. And will you please pray with me? Father God, we come to you in prayer. God, we acknowledge that you are good and you are awesome. You are in control of all things. God, I thank you for this time together to learn about you. Holy Spirit, will you please be here? Will you give us all ears to listen? And Holy Spirit, will you please give me and our other teachers words to say? Jesus, we love you. We need you. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. All right. Now, Miss Mahala is going to read chapter six to us from the biggest story. Hi, LS Kids. Miss Mahala here from South Reno. I'm going to be reading The Biggest Story by Kevin D. Young in Chapter 6. God's people had a hard time not copying everyone else around them. This was especially true when it came to having a king. Although God warned them how bad kings could be, they just had to have one. So eventually, God gave them a king. Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. The first king was Saul. He was very impressive height-wise and pretty disappointing in every other way. The second monarch, young David from Bethlehem, was definitely much better. In fact, before we got the king, there's almost no one more important than King David. When David wasn't busy sinning, which he did in some really big ways, he was a good, wise, merciful king. Many good things happened to God's people when David was in charge. They were victorious and prosperous and blessed. But the best thing that happened was that what God promised would happen. 
God told David that he would always have a son to sit on the throne. He promised David an everlasting kingdom. This was good news for David and even better news for God's people. It meant that God had not forgotten the guarantee he made in the garden. A deliverer was on his way. And now everyone who had ears to hear knew he would be a son of David. But the next son of David was not the only one we were looking for. Solomon started off on the right foot, but he ended up tripping quite spectacularly. After Solomon, the kingdom split in two. With Israel in the north and Judah in the south, neither kingdom was very good. God punished Israel first, then Judah. In the course of 400 years, God's people would go from top dog to dog food. They had been kicked out of their promised land, just like Adam and Eve had been kicked out of their paradise. And worst of all, David's house and David's throne were no more. The future looked bleak, especially for God's promises. Thanks for listening, boys and girls. Hey everyone, it's Miss Ashley from LS Sparks. That was a great story. That story reminds us of our big idea that Jesus is the only perfect king. We've learned that God always keeps his promises and God promised David, remember King David, that he would always have a son to sit on the throne, an everlasting kingdom. How is that even possible when David's house and throne were no more? David, like Abraham, had a son who had a son who had a son who had a son all the way down to Jesus. And Jesus is not a king that can be beaten or conquered like David was. In fact, he is a king that conquered the worst thing of all, sin. We all make bad choices like Israel and Judah did, but God sent Jesus to rescue us from those bad choices. Jesus lived a perfect life something King David, King Solomon, or you, or I can't do. And then he died without deserving to die. Jesus gave up his life so that we can have a relationship with our Creator God when we believe in what Jesus did for us. All right, so today's memory verse is Psalm 28, 7. And it goes like this. It starts off with the Lord, so we're gonna make an L, and we're gonna bring it across our bodies like a sash. So the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, my heart trusts. And for trust, we're gonna grab onto a rope like we're holding on tight to him. All right, so in him, my heart trusts and I am helped. Good job, Psalm 28, seven. All right, so let's do some motions or voices. Dun, 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 dun. King voice. King voice. All right. Ready? <clears throat> Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. Psalm 28, 7. Great job. Hop like a frog. All right. We're going to go all the way down to the floor. No motions on this one so you can actually hop. You ready? Here we go. Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. Psalm 28, 7. Whew. Great job, boys and girls. All right. Last one one is shout. Ooh, we're going to let shout everyone it. hear us. Ready? On your marks, get set, go. Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. Psalm 28, 7. Nice work, boys and girls. All right, for today's activity, we're going to draw a picture of a crown to help us remember that Jesus is the only perfect king. Let's go. Oh no. Ah, ah still? Ah. 
Come on, what is happening? Oh, it's this way. Okay, I know this might sound crazy, but to draw our crown, we're gonna start with some circles. First, right here, we're gonna draw a long skinny circle like this. Okay, and then up at the top right here, we're gonna draw a circle right there. And then we're gonna draw one over here and one over here. And then two more circles in between our circles. One right there and one right there. Okay, now we're gonna connect to the rest of our crown. So we're gonna draw a little line here at the edge of this circle and another one right there. And then we're gonna draw just half a circle up here like that. Okay, and then we're gonna start by connecting this point to this circle and this point to this circle. And then we're just gonna draw some V's like that. And then like this and like this, and like this. All right, and now if you wanna make your crayon look fancy, you can draw some diamonds on there and some other fancy things. Now that you've got your basic crown, we can outline it with a pen. Then you can erase your pencil marks. Then if you want to add some color, all you have to do is, what? Come on. Finally, there we go. Now you're done. All right, now let's get off the couch and stand up so we can sing some songs and worship God together.
All right, boys and girls, thanks for joining us this week. As you go, let's all remember that Jesus is the only perfect king. See you next time.